Maybe you've heard or maybe you haven't, but sailboats can actually sail faster than the wind. Seems like a bunch of malarkey, right? Ex yeah. Except for the fact that there's videos of people doing it. So, how do they do it? Clearly the answer is A, fancy boats, and B, magic. That's right, rich sailing wizards. That's all for this video. But seriously though, how can you move faster than the thing that pushes you? It seems crazy, right? Some people will say it's because the sail is shaped like a wing. Yes, sails can create an area of low pressure on one side of the sail that sucks the boat along, but that's not really a satisfactory answer. That doesn't really explain in an intuitive way what's going on here. That's what I'm going to explain in this video in as simple terms as possible. Over the past year, we've been learning how to sail. One of the counterintuitive things you learn when you're first learning to sail is how a sailboat can sail at an angle upwind. This is accomplished by creating a wing shape out of your sail. The wing shaped sail creates a low pressure zone in front of the sail, which pulls the boat along upwind. This made sense to me. It was sort of like tricking the wind to get it to pull you instead of push you. But from my perspective, the speed of the boat was always bounded by the wind. But during our sailing training, we heard people talking about being able to sail faster than the wind and no one really had a good explanation about how it worked. So I would concede the point that I didn't know enough about sailing and that maybe somehow the wing shape would make you move marginally faster than the wind somehow. But it kept bothering me. It felt like a perpetual motion trick. The fact that you could sail faster and that would give you more apparent wind, which would allow you to sail faster, which would give you more apparent wind and allow you to sail faster. That would break the laws of physics, things like conservation of momentum, conservation of energy. It's just not possible. Well, to understand how it actually works, there's two important things to understand. First is where is the energy coming from? And B, how is it being harnessed? For the first point, we're going to fall back to some analogies. The intuitive and incorrect way most people think about how wind gives energy to sailboats it's sort of like when Arya pulls me along on the skateboard. If she's pulling me in a straight line on level ground, then I'm never gonna be able to go faster than her, no matter what position I put my body in or how aerodynamic my clothes are. In this analogy, the skateboard is the boat and Arya's feet hitting ground are like the wind hitting the sail. This is where the energy is transferred. We'll never have any more speed than what can be generated by her feet hitting the ground. If a sailboat is sailing directly downwind, this is actually a perfect analogy. A sailboat moving directly downwind cannot move faster than the wind. But I'd say a sailboat is more like a bicycle than a skateboard. On a bicycle, we can change gears to go faster for each round trip of the pedal. Once we've hit the right speed for a gear, it takes pretty much the same amount of energy to keep the speed as it did to maintain speed at a lower gear. In other words, I can go two to three times as fast as first gear without having to work two to three times harder or faster per pedal push. The way the bike does it is by slowly building up speed, working your way up the gears, adding a little bit of energy each time. This is the key, slowly adding energy into the system. If you try to start out at top gear, it's impossible to move. You can use sails and wind to do this too, slowly adding energy into the system. But then you might ask, where are the gears? Gears on a bicycle are like sailing across the wind in a sailboat. Now that sounds confusing even coming out of my mouth here, so let's hop over to a different analogy, which is surfing. Think about a surfer moving across a wave. If you're on a boat just sitting still in the water directly behind the breakers watching surfers do their thing, you'll see the wave going away from you at one speed and the surfer going away from you at a much faster speed. The surfer is moving both with the wave and along it. If the surfer were to just ride straight down the wave and the wave didn't break right on top of them, then they would be moving at the same speed as the wave. This is like sailing downwind and skateboarding. There's no mechanical advantage being leveraged, but when the surfer has speed and they turn to ride along the wave, the fins of the board keep them from sliding down the wave in the same way that the keel on a boat allows the boat to move across the wind. All of the energy is coming from the wave it's just being harnessed more efficiently. Not surfing along the wave actually wastes a lot of the potential energy from the wave, just like sailing dead downwind wastes potential energy from the wind. In surfing, the wave lifts the surfer, who then in turn uses gravity to generate speed. 
For sailboats, they use apparent wind to create a pressure differential on the sail to suck the boat along. So how does that allow us to sail faster than the wind in the same way that a surfer moves faster than the wave? In order to understand that, we need to understand what apparent wind is and why it's so important to sailboats. In sailing, there's two different kinds of wind. There's true wind, which is the wind you feel while standing absolutely still. And then there's apparent wind. Apparent wind is the wind you feel when you're driving down the road and you stick your hand outside the window. Apparent wind can be tricky though. For example, imagine you're in a car moving 20 miles per hour and the wind is also blowing 20 miles per hour from right behind you. If you stick your hand out the window, you'll hardly feel anything because the wind's going the same speed as the car, right? But if you do a U-turn and drive into the wind at 20 miles per hour, now you're gonna feel 40 miles per hour of wind. The true wind of 20 miles per hour didn't change in the scenario, neither did your car's speed, but your direction of travel relative to the true wind did change. Now, one more scenario. The wind is blowing 20 miles per hour from right behind the car and your car isn't moving. You stick your hand outside the window and you feel the wind from behind. Now you speed up your car to 20 miles per hour and stick your hand out the window again and now you won't feel any wind at all. Then if you speed your car up to 40 miles per hour and remember the wind is blowing from 20 miles per hour from right behind you, if your car is moving 40 miles per hour and you stick your hand out, you're gonna feel a 20 mile per hour wind coming from ahead. The true wind is still from behind, but you feel the apparent wind, which is a combination of the speed and direction you're traveling minus the true wind's speed and direction. When we say a sailboat can sail faster than the wind, we're saying that a sailboat can sail faster than the true wind. This is important to understand because sailboats set their sails with regard to the apparent wind and the apparent wind is what's used to create the pull from the wing-like shape of the sails. So let's pull this all together and see how it works on an ice boat. An ice boat is sort of like a tricycle, but instead of wheels, you put sharp blades and instead of pedals, you put a sail. If you hadn't guessed yet, ice boats are iced boats. Ice boats are used on large frozen bodies of water. Why are we talking about ice boats and not sailboats? Well, because sailboats have a lot of drag from moving through the water. Some sailboats have so much drag that they'd never be able to move faster than the wind thanks to the drag. Racing sailboats have heaps of tricks they use to reduce the amount of drag on the sailboat. Ice boats have hardly any drag at all, so when we talk about how ice boats move across the ice, we can have a conversation more purely about how the sail works and then we don't have to worry about drag so much. I also think it's very useful to look at extremes when you're trying to understand a concept. If you, if you know the extremes of what's possible, that, that, that helps to better understand the average scenario. And when talking about extremes, ice boats are extreme. A well-built ice boat can actually travel almost six times faster than the wind. That's crazy. Okay, so we have an ice boat. Let's say that the wind is conveniently coming straight from the north at 10 knots. Now we want to sail directly east. This point of sail is called a beam reach. If our boat is standing still, we'll feel the wind off of our left shoulders, right? We raise our sails and start moving. As we speed up, we'll feel the wind start to move forward a little bit. Once we reach a boat speed of 10 knots, we'll feel the wind from the northeast direction. As the wind starts to move forward, the wing nature of our sails keeps adding energy into our momentum by sucking us along. The more in front of the boat the apparent wind is, the happier the wing shape of the sails is, and we can adjust our sails to optimize the utilization of the apparent wind. Before long, we can adjust our sails to be more close hauled. This is when you bring your sails in and flatten the wing shape out as much as you can. The idea here is to make the wing shape of the sails much more like a fighter jet and less like a jumbo jet. And before you know it, we're traveling along many times faster than the wind by moving across it like a surfer on a wave. There is a limit to this though. You can't speed up indefinitely. At some point, your apparent wind will be coming from so far forward that the wing shape of your sail will start to collapse a little bit and you'll lose speed. This is sort of like redlining the tachometer on your car. One last cool thing about this is so long as we have a good speed, we can actually turn off the wind a bit and sail downwind in a close hauled position. We can't go directly downwind, 
but we can sail downwind at angles at very high speeds. And if we had a destination say directly downwind, which would be south in this example, we can actually get there faster by sailing downwind at an angle very fast, as opposed to sailing straight downwind kind of slow. Now, all of these principles apply to sailboats in the water, but the numbers are less extreme thanks to drag being a drag. Fancy racing sailboats go through a lot of trouble using multiple hulls and hydrofoils to bring the drag down to a minimum, but big fat cruising sailboats are severely limited thanks to their drag. The wind is offering the same potential, but the drag from the water is holding them back. So there you have it. It's actually not rich sailing wizards after all but rather an unintuitive use of the massive amount of energy that's in the wind. I hope this was informative. If it was, use some of your energy and click the like button and to keep that momentum going and hit the subscribe button if you're not already. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.